Uh, I, we haven't given that a rating yet, you know. The lamb and the beef, both. I, I would say authenticity. <coughs> you okay? But you can't read it. See? Yeah. I, call, I call absolute nonsense on this uh, he likes awful thing. Choked down chili. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, he choked out a chili. That's what he's saying. <clears throat> I almost died there, guys. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Okay. This is the quest for the best Chinese in the USA. Welcome to Roland Heights, California. This is actually a suburb of um, Los Angeles. It's bizarre. It I is. Mean, I, I'm, I, I mean, where where are we? Is this America? I you can. I mean, everything looks like American buildings and everything, but everything is in Chinese. And this isn't even a Chinatown, dude. Yeah, I know. It's it's really bizarre. Everywhere you look, you see Chinese. You know, the interesting thing is that uh, you know, what what are you doing? They even drive like China. Yeah, they do. Yeah, but um, looking around, everything is Chinese. Yeah, everything. I, except I must say that everything is in traditional characters, so not simplified. So it's probably got something to do with Taiwan or Hong Kong. Around yeah, there. yeah, yeah. I've seen a couple simplified signs, but most of it, you're right, has been yeah. in traditional Chinese. Yeah. It's weird to see not just Chinese restaurants with Chinese characters on them, but like real B estate. Businesses. Businesses. D dentists. Dentists. <laughs> uh, what yeah. else? Like cell phone companies. Yeah. Everything yeah. in Chinese, and we're here smack dab in America. I actually feel a little bit out of place. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I wonder what would happen if we opened like an English only area in uh, in China what they'd say. I don't think that would work. No, they'd probably come shut us down, wouldn't they? <laughs> a couple of funny little yeah. instances as well. Some of the places you stopped for gas and stuff. Yeah. Uh, bought a drink at a little supermarket. Yeah. No one spoke English. Yeah, that's kind of weird. I like I tried to speak English and I just had to switch to Chinese and they didn't say like active like it was weird that I was speaking Chinese. It's kind of like yeah, that's what you do in this area. It's really bizarre. It is. Anyway, it's kind of wintry. It's a little bit cold. Although let's be fair, it is California. It's never really cold here, right? right. It's a little bit cold though and. Uh, one of the best things to eat in winter, Chinese food-wise, is hot pot, right? Right. We're not talking about overly heated up marijuana. This is actually a <laughs> pot full of... Uh, <laughs> what? I never would have thought of that. Anyway, uh, yeah. hot pot is basically this cauldron of boiling oil and broth that you dip your own food into. Yeah. And uh, it's a Mongolian thing. It's also a Sichuan thing. It's all over China, really. Too. Oh, yeah. No, it's, it's incredibly popular. And every city in China has it. And you get all sorts of specialties all over the place. Sichuan hot pot's really, really popular. Right. Chongqing hot pot's really popular. One of my favorites, Xiao Fei Yang, you know, little fat sheep. Right. Um, but yeah, we haven't actually arranged anything. No, we're gonna look for a good Sichuan hot pot place. I've seen a couple signs around here at least, but you know what's funny is that I always thought Chinese food could really take off in America at yeah. some point, right? Like real yeah. Chinese food, because it's awesome. But I always thought, Hot pot's never going to take off because of the lawsuits and liability issues. Yeah, because it's basically a big cauldron of boiling oil, right? right. And if you, you've got kids or something there, what if you drop something in there and it splashes them? Or, right. You know, that kind of thing. But lo and behold, there are hot pot restaurants here. What do you reckon we pull in pull in over here? There's a whole bunch of Chinese restaurants here. Yeah, yeah. We'll I mean, they've got what, the spicy moment, this and... and yeah, yeah, actually, okay. there's a bunch. Yeah, so let's pull in How about see. this La Meza one? <laughs> Yeah, okay. La Meza. You know, you know <laughs> for, <laughs> for those of those of you who don't know what La Meza means, it means hot girl, you know, like right. spicy sexy girl, girl sexy basically. Girl. Yeah, it's, it, it literally translates to spicy girl. It's kind of There, that's his La Meza Ho Guo. Yeah, let's do it. That'll be a real Sichuan. Or maybe Chongqing. Yeah, I gotta tell you though, like, not having not actually planned this, we're just gonna have to walk in there and just running gun. <laughs> just running gun and see if they've got a manager, see if he'll let us film. But okay. so far, everybody has been really nice to us in America, so sure. I don't think they're going to turn us away. Sounds good. All right, let's do it. <laughs> Our restaurant name is the Sancheng Lamets. Sancheng means a mountain city in English, not a word. The Lamets in Ch English is like spicy girl, because we sell spicy stuff, hot stuff. Hot pot has a soup, and then you cook in the middle of the table, and the customer will cook all the, everything like by itself. So we have a spicy and a non-spicy, two different flavors. Because the hot pot is really good winter food, and then when you eat like you know spicy flavor, strong flavor, flavorful, 
and uh, you can eat like all a lot of different stuff inside. Most people that will cook like lamb, beef, vegetables, and uh, even the dipping sauce. You can dip with uh, a lot different dipping sauce. Hot pot in America was not something I expected to see, to be honest. It definitely wasn't here when I was in America about 10 years ago. Yeah, I mean, I remember people telling me like that there are branches of Xiao Fei Yang and right. Heidi Lao opening right. in America, and I was like, wow, that's interesting. Like, right. would Americans actually go for that, you know? For sure. Now, this place is kind of typical of your normal Chongqing or Sichuan hot pot that you would get in China. Yeah. We'll say it's a little nicer. Yeah. And uh, I mean, kind of just by looking at some of the quality of the ingredients and some of the freebies that you mm. get. So basically, you start every meal with these handmade, what are these? Uh, the sesame balls okay. and uh, little cakes and stuff, and they they make them right here apparently. Apparently, these hand are hand rolled, hand rolled, handmade sesame balls. Let's try yeah. one. Yeah, I'll give one a shot too. A little appetizer while we wait for the hot pot to uh, boil. I have to point out that I haven't seen a single white face or brown <laughs> face or any other kind of face in this restaurant. So it must be really good because they're all Asian. Yes, so they approve you know? of it obviously. Yeah. And yeah. I hear I hear Chongqing dialect. I'm here in Sichuan dialect. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. here in Mandarin, in the background. So. I mean, if the locals approve, I almost said locals. Well, we're in America. It doesn't feel like it right now. People around us keep calling us foreigners. <laughs> we're mm -hmm. in my own I know, country. I know. What's that? It's a very nice little sesame. There's some sesame in the middle. Okay. And it's quite fluffy, a little greasy, okay. but it's nice. It's different to that, I think. Mm. It's a nice little little starter, you know? Mm. Mm. It's like a piece of sesame toast. Mm. The thing is, I ha I've had these in China plenty Many of times. times. Mm. The difference is, mm. you would not get those for free in a Chinese restaurant in China. People would swoon in over the mm. freebie aisle and just start mm -hmm. ripping mm -hmm. them all out, stuffing them in their purses and mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a different story over there. For sure. Mm. Now, it's starting to boil here. Basically, what we got here is your typical half and half pot. Except it's a little weird. I've mm -hmm. never seen it like this. It's normally they call it a yin yang, mm -hmm. and they actually have it like a yin and yang. They have it, um, you know, in the shape of yin and yang, right. and it's spicy and then the mm. normal broth, right? Mm. This is just going to cut down the middle. Yeah. Yeah, so first square hot pot I've seen. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Now, we got mm -hmm. lamb, mm -hmm. we got beef belly, yep. which is nyo nan, right? Mm -hmm. We got uh, winter melon, dong gua. Mm -hmm. I got a single egg because I've never cooked just a normal egg in a hot pot before. I thought that might be a little interesting. Yeah. We got a vegetable kind of combo. Mm -hmm. So it comes with cabbage and spinach and all that good stuff, right? Yeah. And then I also got uh, some tripe, some beef tripe, just for you. Okay. Well, okay. thank you, because you know I hate that stuff. <laughs> but well, we're looking for authenticity, aren't we? For sure. Uh, now, it would be a little bit weird and a little bit boring just to dip this stuff in here yourself mm. and just eat it out of the pot, obviously. Yeah. Now, the whole thing about Chongqing Hot Pot is it comes with dipping sauces. Correct. Why don't you run Correct. us through what we got here? Well, basically, they've got a little condiment section over there, and what you do is you can actually build your own sauce. They have a couple of recommendations up there. They say those sort of spicy girl recommendation and stuff, but here, you know, you put this together, so yeah. what did you put in there? Some kind of lao gama? Lao gama is like the really famous chili oil sauce, sauce paste yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. And then I guess some bean paste, some cilantro or coriander, mm -hmm. and some Chinese chives. Yep. And that's kind of the more savory version. The sweeter version over here. Yeah, let me get that out. Is I got the mushed up chives. I got yeah. the garlic, and then There's I got the sweet peanut sauce and some peanuts themselves. Yeah, yeah. I like those. So yeah, good. what you do is you're gonna mix that, mix right. that around into and a little bit of, bit of a paste. Yeah, and then you know once the meat's cooked or whatever's cooked, you take it out, just dip it in there, and you eat it. For sure. And this is all up to you, really. They had a ton more options for sure. This is usually what I get. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know about you. Yeah, oh, yeah. No, that, I'm I'm very straightforward. I just normally have soy sauce. For sure, I got you. Maybe a couple of things, depending. Now, there's yeah. one thing here that you can't eat, so we'll save that for last, and that's the mushed up shrimp stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's It right. looks weird as hell. I have seen it before, and it kind of turns into like little logs of shrimp. Yeah, no, I'm looking Sasha that. gets that. She likes that, yeah. Okay, your wife likes that, gotcha. Yeah. Now, a little pro tip mm -hmm. is use the back of your chopsticks when you pick up some of yes. the raw meat, because yes, you don't yes, want to yes. be eating that raw meat, right? Yeah. I mean, what do you say we start with half the lamb and then half the beef? Yeah, what sounds good to me. Do you want the lamb to be spicy or the beef? I don't mind either way. I'm good either way. Let's go yeah. lamb. I like the taste of lamb, so let's put sure. that in the normal sure. one. Sure. And beef will go spicy. I got medium spicy. You could go like crazy ape, ape spicy if you ape want to. Ape spicy. Now, the sure. manager um, of the restaurant said that, you know, hot pot comes from Chongqing. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, that's not necessarily <laughs> true. <laughs> right. This style. Yeah, mm -hmm. maybe. Mm. 
apparently this is this is the legend is that Genghis Khan mm -hmm. you know in Mongolia needed a way to keep his soldiers fed while they're on the march right because okay. they're you know they ride their horses and everything and sure. they're conquering and pillaging and doing their thing right but they don't have time to sit down and really make camp and set up right. and so they have to have something that's really quick to eat right so what they did was they actually used to take their steel helmets the mm -hmm. metal helmets right and then boil them just make a campfire stick the steel helmet on the fire throw water in there like boil it and then just throw bits of random meat that's or whatever, super just cool to cook it. yeah so that's apparently where hot if that story from. is true that's awesome yeah no, and i would sure fully i would fully believe that over whatever story i heard i'm before. pretty sure that's that's the the one, origin. One yeah. thing that they definitely didn't do, the Mongols, was put a bunch of chilies and make it super spicy like this, right? Well, I mean, chilies are a new world food anyway. They are, right? right? So it comes from America or South America, wherever, you know. Should we try the lamb? Mmm. 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 Mm. I have to say this real quick. Yeah. The peanut really sauce good. and the lamb is better than any any I've had in China. Yeah. at a hot pot restaurant just because of the quality it tastes fresh it's the quality of the meat but i mean once again when you're talking about using better ingredients right um of course it's going to taste better of course, of course so we have to think about authenticity here right right and if you knock me out and put me here and didn't tell me where i was i think i was in china mm. try some of this sauce here mm. i think right. you'll like it mm -hmm. um, but the lamb and the beef both tastes are kind of other rest in terms of freshness and quality. Oh yeah. Not as fatty as what you'd get in China to be honest. Mmm. Mmm. That's really good sauce, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> good choice. Good choice. Oh, that's fantastic. I'm gonna pop some of these tripes in, okay? Okay, now this is something, you know, uh, yeah. Sea milk apparently likes this. Now, anyway, the thing is, I, I didn't grow up eating awful and tripe, and I, I think awful is awful. I was gonna make an awful joke. Why do you have to steal from you? <laughs> okay, sorry. Anyway, so I really don't like anything that's organs, so livers, lungs, hearts, kidneys, all that kind of stuff. I really can't stand, and it's really popular in China. But Very this is popular. this is why I like hot pot. Okay, I got to tell you a bit of a story here. When I first got to China, because you know when you get to China, people are always taking you out, right, and treating right, right. you to dinner. Right. Okay. When you make, meet new friends, make sure. new business acquaintances. And it's part of the culture, so they'll treat you, right? Right. And then they take you to what they believe is the best restaurant or the nicest right. restaurant. That's nice. And it is nice. And then they, they order everything for right. you, right? So they go ahead and they order X, Y, Z. And it sucks, man, because like a lot of the stuff they order that they think is special or delicious or whatever is like really horrible right. for, for a Western person. You know, right. we're talking fish heads, chicken heads, right, chicken right. feet, you know, like tripe. Blood, blood sausages, you know, all sorts of weird sure. stuff, which I'll be honest with you, it's just like for someone that's got a normal Western palate, who's not growing up on a farm or whatever, you know. <laughs> so I didn't grow up on yeah, a well, farm. Yeah, well, who has a mother who grew up on a farm or yeah. whatever, you know, like it's not cool. And right. you, you sit there and you can't really eat it. It's, no. it's disgusting. And you're trying to be polite and you're trying your best. But I'm just saying, you know, of course it's delicious and it's special for them because they are used to it. Sure. So the reason why I like to go to Hot Pot is you get to choose what you eat. Sure, right? very customizable. Look, yeah, look at this, like, I might be sitting here, yeah, you've got the tripe, Right. yeah, you've got the weird stuff. Right, I can eat that, and then you yeah. can have the other and stuff. And then, right? then you're like, oh, look, it's nice shaved beef or shaved right. lamb, and then you just grab a bit of that, and, you know, the way it works is you're actually supposed to take these ladles. Yeah, for sure, Okay. And you can fish them out like that. And um, you just take, like, a piece of, uh, I'll take this little piece of beef here. This That's is especially what you do if there's tons yeah, tons, tons of people, people at the table and so you know what you, you're usually like everybody has a ladle sure right and then all you do is you cook it you actually cook it in the mm -hmm. in the ladle right right until it's and, and it's super quick yeah yeah it just depends on the the slice of the meat like right. how quick it is you can see that's not cooked it's yet not yet <laughs> yeah, yeah. well you know just depends it's getting there yeah so i'll stick it in a nice boily bit there okay i would say in a yeah. second probably in a second. in a second now i'll be honest with you usually there are serving chopsticks like you know yes because right now what we're doing is not the most hygienic but we're used to it in china we're so used to it yeah. i mean that's what a lot of people yeah. do right that's yeah. where i learned it obviously yeah yeah okay and, and then you pull it out and there we go there so, you go you it's already so you see super quick you you have your meat right over here it's easy to get in right. easy to get out so you right. don't lose it in there because sure. you can lose stuff in there and you'll we'll never be found i if i'm just eating with a friend or yeah. like my wife or something i usually don't just, use just the ladle just because everything. it's everything's yeah, in yeah. there you just kind of just fish it dump out. it in there yeah but i mean that's that's the correct way to eat it right for sure. um 
and it's an incredibly popular dish during winter time. Yeah. And it's really cool to have at home as well. Yeah, it's like super, it's actually a really good party thing. Like you basically, you can have people over mm -hmm. and they all get together and you all eat. But actually what I was gonna say was it's one of the, weirdly enough, mm. I don't know, you said you didn't see any white people in here or yeah, yeah. you know, ethnic uh, Westerners, I could say, yeah. in this restaurant. And I think it's a little bit strange because I feel like one of the most stereotypically popular dishes amongst expats in China is hot pot. Absolutely. They love it, right? It, it, it is a social thing. Usually there's a lot of beer involved. Right. Lots of beer. And, okay, we're at a square table, which is a bit odd because usually Always hot around, pot right? is a round table. Right. So everybody sits around the table, right? They're drinking beer, they're eating whatever they want. It's right. usually, it's a winter food. Sure. There we go. There goes See this hairy little bastard. Seamilk's favorite tribe dot com. This looks different than what I'm used to. Yeah, normally it's like gray. Right. Maybe this is like maybe who knows what I've been eating in China. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Whew. That's crunchy. Mm. It's good. You know. Usually when you eat tripe and stuff in China, yeah. you can pinpoint exactly what animal it is. Yeah. Because it's like, that's definitely what they eat, you can tell, right? I would want to dip it into something for you. There has absolutely no animal flavor or no barnyard flavor. It's which the makes texture it good. that gets me. I got you. Well, yeah. slather it in peanut butter. I'm like, anything tastes good. Yeah, let's see. I'll, I'll tell you in a minute. Let's just give it a shot. It's not that bad, come on. <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's awful. <laughs> it's awful, awful. I get it. I get mm. it. I get what you did there. Okay, look, I gotta just be br brutally honest here. Authenticity. Mm -hmm. When it comes to that, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm gonna give it a ten. You get that. <laughs> you get that in in China in a hot. It tastes a little better, actually. Taste rating <laughs> out of ten. I'm gonna give it a zero. Just because you don't like it. Absolutely. However, yes. yes. Everything perfect. is perfect. Thank, Thank you, you so much. I so, personally like it. We're not rating each one. Okay, of maybe these maybe a one. Okay. But that That's one comes from the sauce, not from the actual <laughs> thing. You know. One from the peanut butter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The lamb, though, uh, I, we haven't given that a rating yet. You know, the lamb and the beef, both. I I would say authenticity. <coughs> you okay? But you can't eat it. See? Yeah. I call I call absolute nonsense on this. Uh, he likes awful thing. Choked up chili. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, he choked out a chili. That's what he's saying. <clears throat> I almost died there, guys. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Okay. Um, after you cook all the meats, is usually when people put the veggies in. Yeah. So we get some winter. Why don't you get some winter melon out for everyone? Yeah, I got a piece of donghua for you right you here. Yeah, I don't want to water down your sauce too much. Winter melon's weird. It's not really. It doesn't taste like melon. No, it doesn't. It tastes like a vegetable. Yeah. Nice and flavorless, like just like donghua should be. <laughs> yeah. Let's take a look. I've never been a massive fan of it. No, no, me neither. You know, I have to be brutally honest, you know, and it's just kind of a real realization I've made now. I don't like hot pot as much as I thought. <laughs> 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 so I'm serious. I, think I, mean, I no. think I totally understand what you're talking I, about. It's more the experience, right? Yes, yes. Mm. It's not about the food as much as it is the experience because I, I promise oh, you, <laughs> Sorry. every time I've had hot pot in China, it's always been a bunch of friends, you know, you're out, it's cold outside. Right. You, you're drinking beer, you're right, having a good right. time, everyone's just ordering, because it's usually cheap and cheerful. Right, right. Unless you go to a really fancy sure, one, sure, sure. you can get away with just ordering plate after of plate course. of meat, and you know, it's good. And you know, it's really nice to have at home as well. Yeah, I agree. Every every single supermarket's got a little, like a little section that sells meatballs, and, and, the, the, and the sauce, shape. That, or the yeah. stuff you make the broth out of. Yeah, right? like the chaffee on broth right, right. or whatever, you know, all that kind of stuff. Right. So you can go in there, you can get all your ingredients, right. go home, all you need is a hot plate. Right. Um, either, electric, yeah. Yeah, electric hot plate, or your little gas one, I got right. one of those. Yeah. And you set it up on your dining room table, and you just kind of have Chomp away. Hot, pot, hot pot, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, so I'm gonna so. say total for <laughs> authenticity of this place as we eat the rest of these vegetables and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna say seven out of 10. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you're comparing to stuff we've had in China. And for taste, I'm gonna go for a six because I think hot pot is, tends to be overrated. Yeah. Um, it's just one of those things that's a bit of a novelty when you get to China, but eventually I got sick of it. And I'm, I actually am still kind of sick of it. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, well look. I don't wanna be a positive poly or a negative no, no, Nancy. No, no, absolutely. I'd say if you happen to be in California, in this area, definitely you should, check it you out. You should check this particular restaurant out. It's fantastic. Right. Like, if if yeah. you knock me out, 
in China and you brought me here and you woke me up, I'd think I'd st I was still in China. Sure. Honestly, the only thing that would throw me off are the square tables. Right. And, you know, the freebie the foods. The free foods, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, that's not, sure. not normal. Um, and, of course, the top quality ingredients. Yeah. You know. Cool. But it's pretty damn awesome. So. What do you say we finish up here and uh, get back on the road? Let's do that. Got a, a, a lot more places to go, a lot more Chinese food to see. But, yeah. You can get good hot pot in America. You can. I'm kind of surprised. Me too. Mm. Got the hot pot out of our system, that's for sure. The hot pot's still in my system, and I don't know how it's uh, how it's going to exit my system. That was really <laughs> spicy. Yeah, it was nice though, and I'm feeling really warm. You know, I said it, it's a good winter food. It really is. It kind of warms you up. Sure. So I think you nice. kind of big dub how cold it was because I feel like it's only 65 degrees. It's not actually that cold out. Yeah. Well, you but, know how it is. You know? <laughs> Brr, that was nice. <laughs> well, you know, it was packed though, and like yeah. more and more people kept coming in as we were leaving, so it's really popular, and that just shows you just how good it is. Because if right. it's chock full of Chinese people, and they are, we bumped into some subscribers just yeah, now leaving, cool, yeah. which is awesome. They're from China, right. they watch our stuff, right. and if they're saying this is a good place and they're coming here, right. then you know it's authentic. Looks like we ran into the right spot. Yeah, we certainly did. Now, that was a far cry from a lamb fetus inside of a hot pot. Yeah, I gotta, I, I gotta tell that story. Go you know? ahead. Like I said, when I first got to China, I was really disappointed with a lot of the food because you know every time you go out, they're giving you some horrible thing, which you know, like pig's blood tofu or whatever. You know, pig's especially in and... in Guangdong yeah. because Guangdong, I mean, people in Beijing will have a different experience or Shanghai. It's it's way more foreigner friendly, but Guangdong is not foreigner friendly. No. <laughs> okay. No. So anyway, um, so. I used to love to go to these hot pot places and there was a new one well not new but one I hadn't tried and so I got everyone, everyone together you know my friends and we went there we were drinking beer and having a great time and just you know the usual thing like meatballs and you know throwing in the beef and the lamb and I asked them to recommend something and they were like yeah this is our tursu which means our specialty right and I was like what is it and they said it's young roll young roll lighter you know which just means it's it's lamb I'm like mm -hmm. okay so we're carrying on eating and then the waitress came and she had this plate of, it was like literally disgusting. It looked like afterbirth. It Probably literally was. looked like uh, like afterbirth and she just like threw it into the pot. And I was like, okay, and we keep eating, we keep eating. And then my friend, one of my friends was suddenly incredibly shocked because what he'd pulled out is he'd pulled out a, a mini lamb, like a lamb fetus. And it was like the skull with the skeleton and bits of meat and stuff and everything he lifted it out and I was like what the hell is that and what they'd done is they'd basically given us their specialty is lamb fetus so I guess when they slaughter the lambs that are pregnant you know then they get the lamb fetuses and they store them or whatever and then that's what they like to put in their hot pot so you got to be careful you can't just willy-nilly order anything off the menu on that note we'll <laughs> see you at the next restaurant <laughs> see you there Next time on Quest for the Best Chinese in the USA, we tour LA in search for the crispiest, most succulent Peking duck in America. If you enjoy the show, consider wearing one of our awesome t-shirts to show your support. We'll see you in the next episode. Thank you. Cool. Can, can you help me tell everyone to stay awesome? Stay awesome in yeah. Chinese? Yeah, that's cool too. 大家都看他的视频，超酷的，超级。<laughs> <laughs>